What's going on ladies and gentlemen, this is Kevin Jackwoods with The Cage Review and we're going to review Monday Night Raw for March 11th, 2019. And uh, as usual, mixed bag, uh, some things I really liked about it, some things that I really could have done without. Let's get into it. You start out with The Shield, they come out, they say their goodbyes essentially as The Shield. Uh, I don't know how real this is or is not, uh, I don't know how real or not the Dean Ambrose leaving after WrestleMania thing is. Uh, a lot of people say it's a work. Who knows? So after the Shield kind of disperse, uh, Seth Rollins is there. He gets interrupted by Paul Heyman. And then, of all people, Shelton Benjamin comes out and interrupts and interferes and tries to take out Seth Rollins, turns into a match. Um... And I don't really understand because Shelton Benjamin is like a SmackDown guy and I guess they're just flip-flopping people now and not really paying attention to their own setup. Um, this is my problem with WWE is nothing that they make as far as rules is consistent. Um, it's very, very, very hard to have any kind of suspension of disbelief when you don't pay attention to your own rules or you change your own rules and everything flip-flops to match what you want for that night, nothing really makes sense with WWE. So, that being said, I really do like Shelton Benjamin. I think he's an amazing athlete and one of the most underrated athletes on their rosters. Um, so, it was a decent match between him and Seth Rollins. And honestly, I would say that it wasn't as good as I would expect it to be between Rollins and Benjamin. Because they're both incredibly talented guys. Uh, but it was a decent match for sure. And of course, at the end of the day, Rollins is going to take the win. Then you have Balor comes out. Uh, him and Rollins have this little smile and handshake as they run up and down the ramp. Uh, Balor versus Lashley is next. A lot of interference from Leo Rush. I'm not the biggest fan of Lashley since he's been back in WWE. I've said that a bunch of times. Um... He's a big guy, he's got a good look, but something is just missing with this. I'll be honest, there is just a lot uh, that I'm not catching with Bobby Lashley. Like, his personality since he's been back has been stale at best. Um, so a lot of interference from Leo Rush, that causes Bobby Lashley to capitalize, pin, and get the Intercontinental Championship back from Finn Balor. Uh, Balor had a pretty short run there. They seem to be flip-flopping belts like this pretty often. Um, I don't know that I agree with it or like it, but whatever. Not my place to say anything. Uh, then you get Ronda Rousey. She comes out. She's doing her heel bit. She's doing her Ronda against WWE bit. Going rogue and calling everything fake, essentially. Uh, and then of all people, Dana Brooke comes out and has this promo that, um, I don't know. It is what it is. But Ronda just lays out Dana Brooke. She, like Dana Brooke is saying like she wants to challenge Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey just lays her out. And I'm like, this was all pointless. Dana Brooke has done nothing. She's not anybody viable. You already know that Ronda Rousey is going to run freight train through her. It was just stupid. So then you get Aleister Black and Ricochet versus Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. Um... Pretty good match. Really, I really like Aleister Black and Ricochet. I mean, they're amazing. And uh, actually, I really like uh, Chad Gable, too. The guy's an amazing talent. Um, and I am a fan of Rude, but I think those three kind of outshine him a little bit. But at the end of the day, Ricochet, Aleister Black, they get the win. So they're still in title contention. There you go. They're walking up the ramp, uh, Aleister Black and Ricochet, and they get smacked by... Uh, the Revival who come out, lay them out real quick. And then Chad Gable and Bobby Roode start walking up and the Revival start walking back. So there you go, there's that. A Moment of Bliss, this was just dumb. Uh, a Moment of Bliss, Alexa Bliss comes out, she's making this big promo about this big celebrity that's going to host WrestleMania. It turns out to be Alexa Bliss. That's the host of WrestleMania. Apparently they couldn't have gotten any bigger name and someone in their own company. Uh, so whatever. Charlie interviews Braun Strowman. After that, some dude comes up uh, and says, you know, your car is here. And Braun Strowman's like, what car? And it's a gift from Colin Jost, who is kind of taking a jab at 
Brian Strowman, but also trying to make a peace offering. And it's one of these cars is like not put together and Braun Strowman's just ripping the thing apart. You know, trying to show that he's stronger than any guy actually could be. Um, and I'm honestly tired of those shticks because it's ridiculous. It's like watching a cartoon at that point. No man is going to be able to rip that car apart like that, period, ever. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense. So... I don't know. I'm not a fan of those bits. I'm just not. Keep it at least within the realm of reality. Then you get an Elias bit. Uh, he gets interrupted by No Way Jose. Elias, tired of being interrupted, attacks No Way Jose. This does nothing for anybody. It was just thrown together, you can tell. Uh, space filler. Plenty of space filler today. Then you get the announcement that Harlem Heat is going into the Hall of Fame as a tag team. So Booker T, now a two-time Hall of Famer, by himself and with Harlem Heat. And I really did like Harlem Heat back in the 90s, man. They were a pretty big tag team. Uh, they were very cool. Booker T, pretty athletic for his day. So it was cool. It was cool to see. Uh, then you get Natalia with Beth Phoenix versus Nia Jax with Tamina. Uh, again, this is something that does nothing for anybody. Um... Uh, Natalia and Nia Jax get thrown out very quickly. Uh, Tamina gets involved. Beth Phoenix gets involved. The match gets thrown out. There's a fight between Beth Phoenix uh, and Natalia, Nia Jax, and Tamina. Nia Jax and Tamina kind of get beaten out of the ring. They go back. They're walked through Gorilla, and there's Sasha Banks and Bailey to start beating on them all over again. So that fight ensues. Uh, and that's all it was. It was just a couple of scraps and... Really no beginning, no end, honestly. Uh, then you get the Triple H Batista promos. Uh, Triple H calls out Batista. Batista says, you know what I want, blah, blah, blah. He kind of runs that into the ground. And he's like, I want you at WrestleMania. Triple H says, you're on. Batista says, that's all I wanted, me to go out one last match on my terms. And then Triple H says, it might be your terms, but it's going to be my match. And he says, it's no holds barred. So that's fine. That's cool. Uh, Triple H is damn good at promos. Like, he's just perfected, you know, selling a feeling. Selling, like, the anger and stuff like that. Like, he's really good at it. And uh, Batista, man, he, he's good. He's good. Uh, especially with his acting chops now. I think he adds a little something to it. After that, you get a Kurt Angle promo where he says that he's going on his retirement tour and his last match is going to be at WrestleMania. Well, okay, uh, that makes sense. He's getting up there. He's going to go out with a bang at WrestleMania. So that turns into a match with him and Apollo Crews. Um, pretty cool for what it was. They kept it kind of short. Uh, Angle wins, gets the Angle slam, pins Apollo Crews. They shake hands and hug afterward. So, okay, we're, we're establishing that this is Kurt Angle in his hometown of Pittsburgh. He's got the win. Uh, so it's a cool way to send him off from his hometown, and it looks like now he's headed to WrestleMania, and there you go. So the last kind of bit that leads into a match uh, for the night was Roman Reigns comes down to the ring with the perception that he's supposed to be facing Baron Corbin. He gets cut off by Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre just lays waste to Roman Reigns. Uh, has a really good bit where he hits the Claymore kick, uh, where Roman Reigns turns around and smacks his head into a pole. You know, it's supposed to ring his bell and maybe concussion and all that. Uh, so Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose walk Roman Reigns to the trainer to get him checked out. Dean Ambrose tells Triple H he wants Drew McIntyre in a false Count Anywhere match where nothing goes. Uh, he gets the match. Dean Ambrose versus Drew McIntyre. Really good match. Uh, this is where I think Dean Ambrose excels. When he has use of the entire arena and he can kind of do what he wants and make stuff up as he goes... Uh, Drew McIntyre was willing to work with him here, which says something for Drew McIntyre. Um, it was really good. It really was a good match. I think both guys added something to it, and it was fun to see. So, match really did go all over the place. At the end of the day, they were kind of by the uh, announcer table, and there's uh, a stairway that goes up to that stage. And on this stairway, they have like a handrail, and Drew McIntyre put... Dean Ambrose's head and arm through the handrail and then kicked him with a Claymore kick uh, while caught in that handrail. It was a pretty cool visual. 
I really like the way they did it. Uh, Drew McIntyre, he gets the win. He looks strong. Uh, Dean Ambrose, even after the match, he comes back and he's like, you know, still got fight in me. Drew McIntyre just Claymore kicks the fight out of him again. So tonight was all about Drew McIntyre looking strong at the end. He took out Roman Reigns. He took out Dean Ambrose. Uh, it was a damn good setup. And the guy, I've said a hundred million times, he just has the look. He really does. The guy just looks like a damn star. He's built like a brick. He's tall. He's agile. He, you know, he's definitely athletic. Um, I've seen a guy his size do stuff that a guy his size should not be able to do, quite frankly. Uh, so it's pretty cool. So there you go. Drew McIntyre looking strong at the end of the night. Overall, I did like tonight. I did. Um, there are some things that made me question some, you know, things. Like I talked about at the beginning where, you know, Shelton Benjamin, they're just brand swapping and stuff. And they never pay attention to their own rules. Uh, but other than that, it was a good old show. Uh, a, a moment of bliss I didn't like. I mean, that was just a waste of space. And there were a couple other ways to space things like Elias and uh, No Way Jose. But Rollins Benjamin was good. Uh, they did have a title change. Uh, Ronda Rousey's promo I thought was good. I, Dana Brooks not, not as much. But you still have R Ronda Rousey run through her like a freight train. So that's okay. Aleister Black and Ricochet that was good. Uh, Braun Strowman Britt uh, even though it was like overdone and cartoonish. I did like what they're setting up here. So... That's fine. Uh, Harlem Heat going in. I really like that. Batista Triple H promo. I like that. Kurt Angle promo. I like that. And the end, I really liked. So, although I did feel like it had its problems, there were things about this show that, like, really hit me in particular is, okay, this is good. This is stuff that I like to see. Um, and I think it really left off on a high note. So I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Which is probably stronger than maybe I should give it. But like I said, there were certain things that hit me personally that I really liked. So 8 out of 10, that's where I'm at. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. My name is Kevin Jekowitz, Cage Nation, out.